Things have been so busy around here lately as we're gearing up and preparing the farm and the garden areas for fall. And in a previous vlog, I shared with you our first big day as we were prepping some beds, getting them ready for our first fall crop. And let me tell you, I got quite the workout that day of using the broad fork. And I think the broad fork got a good workout too. One of the things that I've learned as I've transitioned from a homesteader more to a market gardener and a homesteader is that you need to be preparing for the next season before you get to that season. If you wait till you're in the season that's, that you need to be ready for, if you wait to start preparing, once you're in that season, it's too late. So we kind of are in a, in a crunch time right now as we're, we're still in summer, but we're gearing up and we need to get things all ready for fall. So this morning, I got right back to work and getting started with preparing our garden beds in our main market garden area. But before I got started, I had to lather up and spray on some bug spray. And it's not just some any ordinary bug spray. It's from Mother Nature's Mountain. And it's made with all natural ingredients. And Dr. Flower, a friend of mine, actually grows the ingredients and makes these sprays and tinctures herself. It doesn't have any toxic junk in it and it's, it's really good for you. And it's not like some other natural bug sprays. It actually works. So if anybody would, would like to get some of that, make sure you check out the link in the show notes below. So after applying the bug spray, I was ready for the mosquitoes and the bugs. And let me tell you, they are out like crazy right now with it being hot and humid in July. So I definitely wanted to make sure I had that bug spray on. But after that, I started to get my fertilizer ready to go in the beds that I had just brought forth. And one of the mistakes that I made early on with gardening is not using any fertilizer at all. And as a result of that, uh, a number of our crops, they, they suffered. They, we didn't get the harvest that we could have because the soil was lacking in, in certain areas that we really needed to, to supplement with. So we use a basic organic fertilizer as well as right now I am applying uh, organic potassium fertilizer it's from volcanic ash and I'm doing that because when I my tested my soil it was lacking in potassium big time so we're really trying to to increase that so I laid out my fertilizer and applied them to all the beds after that it was breakfast time and we try to have as many meals together as we can and at this meal, I like to give God thanks for the food as well as ask His blessing for today's work and the things we're going to do. And after breakfast, went right outside to get back to work. And Josiah helped me gather up some buckets because we were going to be moving some compost today, baby. Hey, buddy, I want you to grab eight of these buckets. We're going to use these to uh, take compost into the new beds that I'm prepping right now. Yes, sir, Daddy. Well, the compost that we're going to be adding to our beds comes from two piles. First pile is right here in the back of the truck, and it's a blend of compost with some clay in it. So this does have clay in it. And then the pile up here, so this right here is basically a leaf compost, just leaves broken down over time. So this works really well for the beds that I have the heavier clay in, uh, which is the upper section of the garden at the back. So we're going to add this in first, and then in the middle, section at the back we're going to add the one that has clay in it because I added a lot of leaf compost to those beds previously so they need a little just a little bit more of a, a, a mixture of a blend and after Josiah gathered up the buckets the rest of the team joined us because this was going to be a team effort to move all this compost so to get this task done we had to work together and to work together efficiently so I came up with an idea to run like a train system okay with these eight buckets that Josiah has brought over Lacey, if you, Micah, and Josiah, go ahead and shovel and add this leaf compost to the buckets. We're going to take four buckets at a time in the wheelbarrow. Well, I am. And then as I'm taking the four, you guys will be loading up another four, and we'll just keep cycling four buckets down and back. Does that work for you?
Okay, guys, I think I'm gonna go get the other wheelbarrow so we can just fill it up and change out and we don't have to lift things and change them and let's make it easier. I know it would have been easier to have the load of compost dumped off right near the beds that I was dumping them in, but that wasn't the case. Also, it could have been easy to have a tractor or skid steer scoop up the compost and move it over there for us, but we didn't have one that was working either. But sometimes you just have to do what you have to do to get the job done. And you can't afford to wait around because you lose time, and if you lose time, you lose money. So. Sometimes you just got to use muscle power to get the job done and that's what we had to do today. Okay, we're going a little bit heavier on the compost than some people probably do. But uh, just because our soil is so heavy clay, I really want to lighten it up and just get some more airflow in there and just make it easy and easier to work with. And I must say, I really like working with these square buckets here. So easy to work with. And if you're working with a wheelbarrow, you can set four in there so much easier Ooh. so bang there you have it that's all the leaf compost that we're adding to these beds i thought it was just going to be eight wheelbarrow loads but it was actually 10. so uh everybody up there has been doing a great job so we're gonna go ahead and let them have a break you guys have done a fantastic job i think we're at a point now where we can go ahead and take a break so really impressed with all you guys have done. Sailor, you even got a little sweat beating up right there. Yeah. So I thought that it was gonna take eight wheelbarrow loads full, but it actually has taken 10. And yes, they did an excellent job. So I gave them the rest of the time off, gave them a break from shoveling compost. And while they had a break and enjoyed themselves, I went right back out, took the mini cultivator, and blended the compost amendments up with the soil that I had brought forth to get the beds ready. longer than I thought it was going to whoa whoops forgot those are on <laughs> yeah that took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to uh, of course it would have been a lot faster with a BCS walk behind tractor or a grillo it would probably saved me uh, probably could have got it done in a quarter of the time or even faster but uh, don't have those items working on a budget and working with what I have uh, BCS walk behind tractor is on the wish list as well as a number of other items and if you want to check out our wish list, check it out below. Uh, but trying to be debt free and continue to stay that way. So uh, working with what we have and doing what we can. Uh, almost done with prepping this bed. Just got a couple more things to do. Got to pull out our lines to uh, redefine our walkways and then it's time to plant. So uh, pretty excited about that. And hopefully we can beat the rain. Cause as I was tilling, I was feeling some droplets so hopefully we can get this done before the rain comes i really want to get this part done this section done and that section there and be a little bit more ambitious and get the bottom section done too but the main thing is to get something planted before the rain far too often people are held back from achieving the things that they want to achieve because they hold on to this false idea that they don't have enough skills they don't have enough knowledge they don't have enough tools they don't have enough resources they don't have enough whatever and it hinders them from achieving what they want to achieve and more times than not they would achieve their goals if they simply just worked hard and persevered and pushed through 
And speaking of persevering and pushing through, I don't know how this knot got in my line, but I'm just gonna keep persevering and getting through it. One of the tools that I plan to purchase soon is a Jang Cedar. We don't have one right now, so we're having to do things the hard way, seated by hand. So Lacey took the wheel hole, made trenches for our seeds, and we just seeded it by hand. Lacey was such a trooper sowing all these seeds by hand. And it hurts me just watching her bend her back like that. So I really want to make sure we get at our cedar really soon. I do want to mention that if you don't have some of the tools and resources that some people have that are a little more advanced than you, you shouldn't want to stay where you're at. You should aspire as best as you can to improve and upgrade as you go along, but at the same time, not letting it hinder you from moving forward. The day started out as being mostly overcast and we were expecting rain. So I really was trying to get these tasks done. However, as the day progressed, the sun kept coming in and out, in and out, and it actually got to the point where it was pretty hot. So for the compost that was in the back of the truck, I went ahead and moved the truck up to where it was shaded, so that way I could shovel out the compost and move it without being in direct sun. I'm definitely about out of gas, as far as physically, definitely metaphorically. My tiller was out of gas, we refueled it, but I need some refueling. So the sun has been in and out, in and out. Not sure where the rain is, but I'm really still trying to get this done, because it's very important that I get this done at this time, so we're not in a crunch come fall, as far as being behind. So uh, I'm almost done, just gonna rake this little bit up, and then take a, Rest from the, from the heat and the sun. Lacey's inside, taking a rest already, and probably working on the vlog, just because uh, she doesn't tolerate the sun quite as easily as I do. Uh, not that I tolerate it super easy. Uh, I still get tans, get heat exhaustion, and stuff like that. So uh, it takes a lot for me to get sunburned, but I'll actually get heat exhaustion before burning in the sun, but nevertheless, still, still not fun. And before some of you start saying, be careful in the heat, be careful in the heat, I try to be careful in the heat. I know I need to take breaks, drink water, rest, all that fun stuff. So go ahead. You're probably going to say it anyways, but thank you. I was trying to be careful in the heat. I try to be careful whenever I'm out in the heat and encourage the kids and everyone else to do the same. Next, I brought in the mini cultivator again and blended up the amendments and the compost and the soil that I had brought for it. Pulled out my line for my trenches again and dug the trenches for the walkways and then came with the wheel hole and seeded this bed by hand as well. Yes, this was a lot of work, and yes, we could have had a number of other tools that could help us speed up and be more efficient, but we used the tools that we had, some of the tools that they used to use back in the day. You know what? They didn't have even the cultivators and power tools that we had today. People back in the day, they just grunted, did what they need to do. And you actually know what? When I first got started gardening, I didn't even have a mini cultivator. I was using a mattock to help till my beds. I did it all by hand, and as we have progressed on our farm we're trying to add more and more tools onto the farm but sometimes like i said earlier you do what you have to do with what you have 
So after I sowed the seed and covered them up, next set up the irrigation to water these seeds so they can get started growing and ready for fall. Well, believe it or not, there's still more work to do out on the farm in preparation for fall. But that's it for today. I am done. No more. This was a long enough day. And we'll just have to get back at it. And that is work and a story for another day. Well, let me know. What has been some things that you had to do that just grunt through it, push through it, maybe not had the ideal tools to get the job done, but you just did it anyways? Let me know in the comment section below. That's it for this vlog, and as always, we'll see you next time, and grow on. Oh, and I almost forgot. I decided to keep my trophy. It's a trophy that I won when I won my pro card in natural bodybuilding. And thanks to a number of comments for those of you who encouraged me to keep it. I really appreciate it. However, right now, he has his little kilt on. He, may have, he might have a different outfit on each time you see him, but he has his kilt or his towel, whatever you want to call it. So, you're not seeing him prance around in his bodybuilding trunks. Well, that's it for this episode. We'll see you next time, and as always, roar. When the lights are out.